fine, let's have a chat. Have you got some tea? I want to talk about some bad habits that I've seen happen with a lot of Harv students and whenever I see this I get a sense of impending doom because I know that even though you might feel like you're progressing really well right now there's gonna come a point where these habits really hold you back and destroy your progress and I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna tell you about these bad habits now so that it's easier for you to go back and fix it now rather than waiting until you way further along in your heart playing and then it's so much more frustrating to go back and fix these things. The first bad habit is constantly getting distracted by shiny new pieces. <laughs> okay, so this is what happens when you're working on a piece and you get to the point where you really need to put in that extra practice to get it to fluency, to figure out those little mistakes that you always make, and then you notice a new piece that just seems so exciting, so much more exciting than fixing the piece you're currently on, and you buy that piece and you start learning that, and then you find after a while that this keeps on happening and you're never actually finishing any pieces. Now I'm not talking about a piece where you're just not seeing progress anymore, you're really frustrated and maybe you actually need to take a step back from the piece. I'm talking about wanting to get that instant gratification of hearing something brand new on your harp and actually you could have progressed if you stuck on your first piece. And the problem is you don't just miss out on having pieces that you can play properly from beginning to end, because that's a nice thing to have, but you also miss out on actually learning the skills that you would learn from polishing this piece. Like working on those practice spots and fixing the technique that's holding you back from playing this fluently. There's so many things you learn from polishing up a piece and I don't want you to miss out on that. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna tell you about a bonus bad habit that always makes you sound a lot worse than you actually are and it's so easy to fix. Bad habit number two is choosing your own fingering too soon. Now this habit often starts because quite early on in your harp journey you wanted to learn pieces that either didn't have any fingering in them or maybe you wanted to adapt piano music for the harp because it was a song you really wanted to play and you pick fingering without having a good grasp of basic harp technique and all the positioning that's required and then this habit plays out by when you are learning a piece that does have good fingering written in you immediately want to change it to the habits of fingering that feel most comfortable to you because maybe the good harp fingering requires skills that you haven't actually built and you kind of want to avoid those skills by fixing the fingering to be something that's comfortable for you. So we fix this bad habit by making sure that we're learning harp pieces from a teacher who has really good technique and is good at choosing fingering that works well to build the right skills in your harp playing. And by consistently learning that fingering for your pieces, eventually you're going to internalize what it feels like to play with good harp fingering and you'll have all the skills required. And then at that point, you can start to sometimes question the finger and say oh well my hand is a little different this is a bit more comfortable for me but it won't be avoiding the skills that you need to learn from good harp fingering. Bad habit number three is prioritizing fluency over good solid harp technique. Now this often happens with people who have a really musical ear and are so excited about hearing a piece from beginning to end flowing beautifully that they rush to get to that point and get to that point a bit too quickly maybe without actually learning solid harp technique as a foundation. Now there's two problems with this. The first problem is pieces don't sound as good when they're played with bad harp technique. I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. And the second problem is that there will come a point where you can't learn more complex pieces and play them with fluency because your technique won't support it. So here's an example of me playing a piece with bad technique and then playing a piece with good technique. Could you hear the difference? So even when you think you're playing beautifully fluently, if you're not prioritizing harp technique, you're holding yourself back from being able to play really well and 
the worst part is that eventually you won't be able to keep progressing and you'll have to go back and fix those problems anyway. So take this as a warning and prioritize learning with good technique, even if that means you get to fluency a little bit slower. This is exactly why I've created a free trial of my video courses so you can experience what it feels like to have me take you through learning a piece with reminders to make sure you do it with good technique. So make sure you click the link down below to get a free course of a song of your choice. And now on to number four. Now this one is for those who are learning to read sheet music more fluently. The habit is writing the letter name below every note in the sheet music. Now this can feel like it's helping because it allows you to read the sheet music more fluently at first. You don't have to figure out every note along the way, but in the long run, you actually end up just reading those notes all the time and not really progressing in learning to read your sheet music faster. Now I'm not saying that you can't ever write any letter name notes on your sheet music as a little tool to help remind you, but I would suggest you do as few as possible, like maybe just one in each measure, or when you get to that point, maybe just one in the, the whole line, um, or start out by just doing every second or third note, and make sure that you're gradually writing fewer and fewer letter names below the notes, and getting closer and closer to being actually able to read the notes, and using the distance between the notes to know exactly where you're going. Bad habit number five is trying to learn pieces that are much too difficult. Now what happens is you get so excited about this dream piece or maybe there's a new piece released and you can't wait to try it and that can be okay. We can try out something new and really push ourselves. Maybe we'll learn some new skills along the way but what sometimes happens is we find ourselves not really progressing because the piece is too difficult. It's too much of a jump and we don't have the technique to sustain it. And then we get frustrated because when we don't make progress, we feel like we're just standing still. Or even if you do progress, you might be completely throwing your technique out the window and you're again learning to play the piece, the notes of the piece, but you're actually undoing your good habits of technique. So what we need to do instead is when we try playing a piece that's a bit more difficult than what we've normally been learning, we need to make sure that we're keeping track of ourselves along the way, kind of checking in. Am I progressing or have I stagnated? Maybe take a video of yourself and check, am I able to actually sustain good harp technique while I'm learning this piece? And if the answer to either of those questions is no, I would suggest putting the piece on pause, going back a level or two or maybe three, depending on where you were learning before, and solidly learning your good harp technique and progressing gradually through the levels. And when you come back to this piece later, you'll find that it's so much easier to learn it. Now it's time for a bonus bad habit that I see happening so often with people who are working so hard on their harp playing, they're doing so well, they're playing with good technique, and they destroy all of that by doing something that is so easy to fix, and that is not tuning your harp often enough. Some of us don't even notice that our harp is out of tune and I think that's because we're not tuning often enough and getting our ear to hear the difference. So what we need to do is tune our harp every day and sometimes it won't go out of tune. So you'll just check it with your tuner. It will take like a minute because every note will be pretty much in tune and you can just keep on going. And that way you'll make sure that you always sound good. Even if you're playing the wrong notes, at least they'll be in tune. Now click here to get your free video course and learn a song of your choice with me. I'll see you there.